If you've clicked on this video, it probably means that you use Tesla FSD, are interested in using full self-driving, or are awaiting a new vehicle that has Tesla FSD and you're interested in how to use it, operate it, and be successful in it, and stay safe, of course. In this video, what I want to do is cover all of the tips and tricks that I've learned along the way using Tesla's FSD for the better part of a year or so. There are a ton of hidden features, uh, some safety settings as well that I want to cover with you guys and ensure that I share everything that I've learned with you so that you could either enhance your experience or if you're going to be using it in the future, get set up for success. So with that being said, number one tip. This happened to me when I first got FSD, which is that you should not get distracted by the capabilities and the cool technology for the very first time. What I mean is when I first enabled FSD and subscribed to it, I was just shocked. It was so amazing to see the car driving by itself. It was like something I've never seen before. And I think that's a pretty natural reaction, especially if you haven't seen it in person before. You basically see your vehicle changing lanes by itself, uh, pushing on the accelerator, braking, chain, like parking. I mean, it does, it does absolutely everything for you. The problem with that is it's so shocking that I wanted to record it and share it with my friends and family. So what I did is I pulled out my phone and I started recording. Well, that's not a good idea because FSD has an onboard camera system that monitors you and ensures that you're paying attention to the road. Now, if you don't pay attention to the road, what will happen is FSD will try and warn you, hey, we need you to pay attention um, and it'll try to grab your attention back on the road and it'll tell you to put your phone down. It'll make little sudden um, beeps on the screen to let you know, hey, you're not supposed to be doing that. We need you to pay attention. Well, um, I didn't really know what that was in the very beginning of my FSD journey. So I kind of continued to record. That wasn't a good idea because what happens is they actually have something called strike. So it says right here, uh, if an autopilot strikeout occurs five times due to improper use, um, full self-driving will no longer operate. And it says this vehicle has not had any such events for me. Now, what that means is for in my situation, when I got uh, a strike, it essentially disabled FSD. I had to get to my destination without using FSD. I had to park. And then I think there was even a timer that I couldn't use FSD. Maybe it was like an hour or so. So essentially I got put into timeout. So that is my very first thing. When you start to use FSD, if you haven't before, make sure that you don't get distracted, pay attention to the road. Don't pull out your phone. Don't try and record. If you really want to do that, have somebody with you record for you so that you don't get that strike. Tip number two start FSD from park. This is a particularly awesome feature that was released with version 13 for full self-driving. This is an awesome feature that allows you to start FSD from a parked state. So all you have to do to do that is go to your car uh, control panel, go to autopilot, and then you'll see a start FSD from park toggle. Make sure you turn that on. What that allows for is you can be in a completely parked state from your garage, your driveway, if you're in a parking spot, what have you. It allows you to start FSD completely from a standstill. So it really enhances that end-to-end -end driving autonomous experience, and it allows you to just drive off without having to engage the wheel at all. There's actually a sub feature of this setting that I recommend you disable. It is up to you ultimately. I ended up disabling this feature because it was just a little bit more intuitive for me personally, and that is to brake confirm. So by default, if you enable start FSD from park, you have to brake confirm before engaging FSD. Now that takes away from the autonomous feeling that I was describing earlier. So you can disable that if you want. And what that does is you just press and hold a button on the touchscreen and you're off from a park state. You don't have to brake check to confirm. Now, if you don't disable that, again, that's on by uh, default. You will have to tap the brake to let FSD know that you're ready to go. Otherwise, all you have to do is get in your car, put in your destination, buckle up, uh, and then press and hold the blue button on the screen that tells FSD you are ready to go. Tip number three. Remember, you can always use the right scroll wheel while FSD is engaged to number one, change your speed profile from chill, standard, or hurry, and then you can also adjust your speed on the fly. It's super easy, and I'll show you how to do it right now. So you can see that I'm currently in the standard driving profile. If I want to switch that in the middle of a drive, all I have to do is take this right scrolling wheel and then move it over to the right to get to hurry mode. As you can see, now it's in hurry mode. Or if I want to switch that over to 
uh, chill, I can just do two ticks to the left, and now I'm in chill mode, as you can see. Now, the same thing applies for the speed. Let me move this back over to standard by simply using this right scroll wheel left and right. If you want to adjust the speed, that's going to be an up and down or north and south movement. So if I move this up, you can see the max speed is now adjusted all the way up to 55, 56, and going forward. If I want to adjust that down, all I have to do is move the scroll wheel down, and you can see that the speed max is now lowered. So again, a super, super simple, easy way to adjust both the driving profiles on the fly, as well as the speed. Before we move on to tip number four, there's one thing that full self-driving can't do, and that's it cannot subscribe to my channel for you. So if you're getting any value from this video, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button down below. It really does help me out and I would greatly appreciate it. Tip number four, if you wanna switch lanes in the middle of a drive on the fly, you can absolutely do that. You can tell FSD which lane you wanna to change to in the middle of a drive and it will do its best to change lanes safely. This is particularly useful if you think FSD is not using the right lane choice. So you can do that again in the middle of a drive and I'll show you exactly what that looks like now. All right, so let's say we're cruising down this road and we want to switch over to the right lane for whatever reason. I'm going to go ahead and click on the blinker here to turn right. And you're telling FSD, hey, I want to turn over the right lane. And you can do that on the fly, right? If there's a specific reason. Now, if I want to go back over to the left lane, I can do that as well, simply by cl clicking the blinker. But what you'll notice there is that FSD didn't turn because it most likely didn't find it safe to do so. Perhaps we were entering the intersection. So it's always calculating the right move at the right time, even if you tell it to do something. So let me see if I can get it to switch lanes now. And you can see now it's switched over. So just because you're pressing the blinker doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to change right away. It is something that FSD needs to calculate first and ensure that it's making the right decision. Tip number five, how to properly disengage FSD in the scenario that you have a critical situation. Personally, I like to press the brakes to disengage FSD. I found it to, I found it to be the easiest, quickest, and safest way to disengage FSD if needed. You could also pull on the wheel, and if you tug on the wheel, FSD is essentially going to be disengaged because it's assuming that you're taking over the drive. However, I've found it to be much easier just to tap on the brake. It's it's a lot quicker, it's a lot easier. And for me, I found it for me, I find it a bit more safe than tugging on the wheel because you need to apply a bit more pressure on the steering wheel as opposed to just tapping the brake very quickly. So that's my recommendation. Always tap the brake if you need to disengage FSD. Tip number six, editing the trip while FSD is on. This one is really useful if you have multiple stops that's programmed into your GPS so you can have multiple stops on your route. And let's say you want to remove one stop before you get to it, or if you want to add a stop or remove it, whatever the situation might be, you can do that on the fly even when FSD is on. And I'll show you exactly how to do that right now. While driving, go to your GPS and then click on the bottom right three dots, then click on edit trip right here, and then you'll see that you have a couple different options. If you want to remove a stop, all you have to do is click on the X, then you click on done. And then what it'll do is it will reroute you to the next stop automatically. Tip number seven, the pedal of encouragement. This one is particularly useful in situations where FSD is pulling up to a red light and it's trying to turn on red, but it's doing a some somewhat of an unnatural stop. You'll notice this at stop signs as well. And if there's a vehicle behind you and you feel as if FSD is being a bit too safe or a bit too conservative in its stop, then you can just give it a little bit of encouragement by pressing on the accelerator. And what that does is it actually gives FSD the confidence to keep going. So you don't necessarily have to wait for FSD to make that full stop if you feel like you're in a situation that's unsafe or if the vehicle behind you is very close to you, for example, you can tap on the accelerator at any time during your drive with full self-driving and it'll give FSD confidence to keep going and not put you in a position in which is either A, unsafe or B, just uncomfortable for you and other drivers around you. Tip number eight, understanding the difference between offset and max offset for your speed settings for FSD. What this is, is you're telling FSD how fast or slow you're comfortable with going over the posted speed limit. So in order for FSD to keep up with the flow of traffic, you're essentially going to set an offset 
of a either a percentage based number or if you want a static number you can set that as well for example if you are comfortable with fsd going plus 15 percent over the posted speed limit you can set that as your max offset so that's the ceiling and that's the height of what fsd will go it will never pass that number that you set it either percentage or a static value i have mine set to about 15 or 20 percent max offset which means fsd will never go above that point now you have a second parameter by the name of offset offset is a static value and you can set that to either plus five 10, 15, et cetera, miles per hour. This allows FSD to again go five or 10 or 15 miles per hour over the posted speed limit. But again, your max offset is the very important number because that is the absolute highest speed that you're allowing FSD to go. Tip number nine, using pins for your GPS. So this one really is awesome because it enhances your capabilities of auto parking at your destination for FSD. So what I mean is instead of putting in a business address, let's say we're going to Target, which I'm going to demo exactly what I mean right now. I have Target right in front of me. And if we're going to Target, right, don't put in Target as the destination. Rather, put a pin in the parking lot so that FSD can park your car for you instead of just bringing you to the storefront. The chances of it auto parking while putting a pin in the parking lot is much higher than just putting in Target as your destination. So I'll show you what I'm doing on the maps and then I'll let FSD go to Target. My It's gonna be a two stop experiment. So number one is I have GPS program to just go to Target itself. And then my second attempt will be to use a pin on the parking lot right in front of Target. And you'll see the difference of how FSD reacts. So let me show you what my GPS looks like right now. So you can see we have Target programmed into the GPS. We don't have a pin. The pin is actually just Target itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click to go to target here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and press and hold this blue button. And FSD is gonna take us to target. And I'll cut to the point in which FSD is going to get us directly in front. Okay, so we're slowly approaching target here. The GPS is reading less than 100 feet. It should be dropping us off on the right side. So because I just programmed target as the destination, it's going to drop us off right in front of the storefront rather than parking for us. So you'll see this happen here in just a second. Right here. So now FSD just dropped us off right in front of Target, but it did not park for us. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to where I started. And instead of putting Target as the address, I'm going to put a pin on the parking lot in front of Target and see what happens then. All right. So I'm back to where I'm started. So now instead of using Target as the address, I'm going to put a pin on the map and I'll show you exactly what that looks like. All right. So you can see my maps now. Here is Target where I put the address in the last attempt for FSD. So instead of using the actual pin on Target, what I will do is I'll actually go right in front of Target and find this parking area, this parking lot. I'm going to go ahead and press and hold, and it's going to put a pin right in the parking lot. What I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and press that button, then start FSD from park is going to highlight blue. I'm going to press and hold that. And now FSD is going to take us to target again. And let's see what happens on this attempt. So you can see FSD is now going the other way because it's a little bit closer for FSD to get to the pin going around target instead of closer to it. Keep an eye on the pin on the maps. You can see it's not directly in front of Target, rather it's in the parking lot now. And you can see that FSD, instead of dropping us off in the front, it ended up parking in a spot. I will admit the parking spot, the parking job was not great. I think we're right over the middle line here. Uh, but nonetheless, it did attempt to park. You have much greater odds of it parking for you if you put a pin in the parking lot in front of the store or business you're trying to go to, as opposed to using the actual address for the store. Those are my top nine tips for you. I really hope you got some value out of this video. If you found any value in this video, definitely consider hitting the subscribe button down below. It does help me out a lot. Let me know if you have any other tips or tricks that I didn't cover in this video down below in the comments. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video.